everybody, welcome to Common Sense Urology, where I go over common urological problems and offer a sensible approach to them. I'm Dr. Neil Gordon, and today's presentation is on suprapubic catheter insertion. If you like what you hear and see, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing, and don't forget to click on the notification bell below to hear of many more episodes to come. Suprapubic catheter insertion is carried out when it's not possible to pass a urethral catheter or it is not indicated, it, particularly in cases of patients who present with a fractured pelvis to the emergency department who may have blood at the urethral meatus. Occasionally there will be a patient with a fractured pelvis who has a penetrating bladder injury and the best time to insert the suprapubic catheter is at the time of the surgical repair for the fracture. The most important thing when inserting a suprapubic catheter is to ensure that the bladder is full. That can be done by percussion or with an ultrasound. However, you don't need to use the ultrasound to actually insert the catheter. For inserting a suprapubic catheter, it's naturally meant to go above the pubic bone, which is located here. The point for insertion of the catheter is approximately three centimetres above the pubic symphysis and it's directed straight back and into the bladder. For the injection of local anaesthetic, it's best to use a spinal needle with the stilette removed. 20 mils of 1% lignocaine is usually used. Local anaesthetic is first injected subcutaneously to a diameter of 2 cm at the site of suprapubic insertion. The needle is inserted 3 cm above the pubic symphysis and held vertically at all times. Injection is carried out as the needle is passed in and will easily go through the skin and superficial fat. It's a little harder having to push it through the linear alba of the rectus sheath, but it'll pop through that and into the extravesical fat and then into the bladder, where aspiration can be carried out to ensure that the right path has been taken. This is an Argyle Ingram suprapubic catheter. It has a trocar, a port for taking samples, and an inflation port for the balloon. This requires a needle and five mils of water. There's a flange which can be sutured to the skin once the suprapubic catheter is inserted. A size 23 blade can easily be passed through the skin and down to the linear alba which can be punctured with it, making it easier to insert the suprapubic catheter. The trocar is pushed through the incision into the bladder, the catheter is advanced and the trocar withdrawn, thumb placed over the end of the catheter to prevent splashing. The drainage bag is connected, the balloon inflated, and then the flange sutured to the abdomen. That was the reason for putting in the subcutaneous local anaesthetic to a diameter of approximately 2 centimetres. Thank you for watching this short presentation on how to insert a suprapubic catheter. I hope it's been informative for you, and if you've enjoyed it, please consider giving a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing. Don't forget to click on the notification bell down below for many more episodes to come. Cheerio!